Okay, let's do community. And for being a true community, you need to be organized and be a legal entity, to be in control, and of course to develop and create. So, this is a movie giving some context about what a community company should look like, to be qualified as a true community company. Oh, and it's version 0.1 of the manifest, so expect changes. And after reading you the manifest, I'm gonna share some thoughts that you're not gonna like. Alright, let's do this maybe? We're starting with what a community company is, and I haven't published yet some formal statute, but in simple terms is a profit non-ownership company controlled by its members. And so we have the manifest, which is the basic requirements a company should fulfill to be qualified as a community company. And the very first requirement is that the board of directors should be consist of and elected by community members. But the members of board of directors cannot work or be paid by a non-community company with competitive projects. In this regard, GNOME Foundation is a non-community company because it is basically led by employees of companies with competitive products. A community company has in a traditional board of directors. The bot is extended both in size and duties, and should also involve the lead developers and engineers of companies' projects. That means that in a community company it is very essential that the bot members to get paid by the company itself. Community members shouldn't only be active, but also regular contributors. An important objective of a community company isn't to grow its community, but constantly reforming it. Also, membership cannot gain by donations, because money shouldn't generate money. A community company should release on an open model, both for software and hardware, because that's the only way to attract new contributors and grow bigger. A community company should release community projects, and for doing so, very often is appropriate to use software or hardware by other companies. But it is very essential to develop, control and lead the crucial parts of their stack. In this regard, KDE Foundation isn't a community company because due to the extended QTUs, Plasma is in a community project. A community company is eligible for taking loans from banks or buying buildings for their activities, but they can't hold assets that aren't related to their business, like shares of other companies. A community company is only and fully owned by herself. Although there is a virtual sharing system that each member owns exactly one share, and profits are distributed equally to each member. The biggest challenge of a community company is to give motivation and encouraging personal initiatives for her members. Salaries aside, the community company should provide a fair mechanism to award the contributors that accomplished the most, by distributing a large percentage of their annual profits to a small percentage of their members. Furthermore, a community company can also buy innovation and expand by acquiring non-community companies, as long as they will turn them to community. Another thing is that a community company can be split to two, or two community companies can be merged to one. For example, GNOME could be merged with Mozilla Foundation, so GNOME could gain a web browser and cloud infrastructure, and Firefox could gain an operating system that is crucial for their existence. And by the way I'm planning another movie on that. And finally, a community company should never be too big to fail. In a healthy ecosystem existing community companies could die but new community companies would be born and continue where others left. Because eventually, community will prevail. Unless if AI prevails first. A community of robots then? Many robots, but a single AI. Cough cough cough. So, I'm using a Fedora Rawhide for YouTube only, and a Fedora Silver Blue for work mostly, and both are by far the best Linuxes you can get today. Second best is probably Arch, but truth is when a problem happens in Arch, they're just waiting for Fedora engineers to fix it. There is not even a competition. Fedora has the money, Fedora has the developers. Which makes me wondering, when Linux desktop started to be a thing, around early 2000, who would have imagined that 20 years later, Linux desktop would be ruled by the open source department of the IBM? I guess it is safe to say that communities failed miserably. Then again, there was never a community, and ironically IBM was in GNOME since day one. But you were just hoping that things could change. Oh well, let's say it just didn't happen and we are back in square one. And if you think it can't get any worse? It just can't. 
Because the purpose of the second foundation we have in Linux is how to please Qt shareholders. Make no mistake. If there isn't a proper distribution of wealth, then there isn't a proper community.